Hello everybody, this is the first video of a brand new mega series where we're going to take a look at how computers take electrical signals and do powerful things with them, such as AI and gaming, and basically anything computers can do these days. Now this will be definitely my most ambitious project on this channel, simply because computers are pretty complicated. But hopefully by the end of this series, you guys will begin to understand how your Python or JavaScript code gets converted into electricity. So I designed this series so you guys can follow along, and the first part is where hardware is needed. Obviously, electronics are very hard to build in real life, as you need specialized tools, so we're just going to use the NAND game to simulate our hardware. If you want to follow along, go to the link in the description, or just go to nandgame.com. It's a very good game. Shout out to the author for creating this. Otherwise, let's get started. So the first component we need to build is the NAND gate. The reason why is because NAND gates are universal, meaning that with a NAND gate, you can build every other logic gate. In real life, computers use transistors, but the NAND game uses relays for visuals. So we have a default on relay here and a default off relay here. Now, as you can see, the default off relay is um, off. And when we pass the power in, by the way, this power comes from the wall. This is why you need to plug your computers in because you need a voltage source that's always one. So that's what this power stands for. But you can see with this default off relay, when we flip the switch on B, it induces a magnetic field because it's passing current through the coils. Therefore, it closes the circuit and therefore it goes. Um, with the default on relay, so this one right here, it's the exact same thing. We can pass the input to the power just to show you guys. And then we can use A to control the coil. This time, the switch is already closed. But when you pass current to the coil, it causes the magnetic field to open the switch. That's why it's default on. Now, I believe the actual default off relay corresponds to a, a NMOS transistor. And then the default on relay corresponds to the CMOS transistor. So there's, if you guys wanted to know what computers actually use, they use NMOS and PMOS transistors. But obviously, NAND game wants us to visualize the coil spinning and stuff. So that's pretty neat, I think. Um, but yeah, that's how computers work at a very fundamental level. And the first gate we are ever going to build is, of course, the NAND gate. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by, first of all, let's reorganize this um, workplace here. And then we're going to need a default on relay and default off relay. Oh, by the way, if you guys don't want to see the solution right now, um, just pause the video or rewind back and then I will show you the solution for each um, level here. But assuming you've gotten to this point already, uh, the solution is as follows. So we take the default off relay, we use the two components, because keep in mind, our left side shows the truth table for the NAND gate. So the only off state is when both inputs are on. So therefore, we need this NMOS here. I'm just going to use transistor terminology. Uh, this NMOS will be fed into this PMOS, which this PMOS will have its source to obviously the positive voltage and then the drain will be to the output. Once we do that, we check solution and this is indeed the simplest possible solution. So we created a NAND gate. Now to explain a bit again how this works is because this NMOS and PMOS here or with these relays, they kind of have complementary behavior. If we turn this off, this will be on. If we turn this on, that will be off. So with these two, they form a CMOS and that's how a NAND gate is created. So let's go on to the next level. Again, we're going to create a gate. This time, it's abstracted away. We don't have all those relays cluttering our screen. It's just nicely packaged into this NAND component. We're going to build an inverter. So an inverter is just a simple NOT gate. And uh, you can pause the video if you want, but I'm pretty sure this one, it's very trivial. You just connect this to the input. There's only one input. So you just connect the output to that NAND gate and you are done. Check solution. Of course, this is the simplest possible solution. Next level. All right, AND gate, also very simple. What we need to do is recognize that NAND is just the opposite of AND. So what do we do? We double the gate. We take the NAND gate, feed it into the inverter, if I can drag it in properly, there we go. And then we feed the inverter, done. All right, now we're gonna move on to the OR gate. This is the first non-trivial solution. Doesn't mean it's super hard, but just take time to think of it. Again, pause the video, come back. Um, assuming you've done that already, let's get started. So with this OR gate, notice how it's just the NAND gate, but kind of reversed. Um, NAND gate, this row is zero, but with the OR gate, this row is zero. So just notice that and you'll be set. We need a NAND gate to replicate this three ones and one zero behavior. And then we need two inverters 
both pass into the input because we can't put the inverters in the output section. Otherwise, we'll just create a NAND gate again. I mean, an AND gate. So we need to put the inverters before the NAND gate and then feed it into the OR gate. And of course, that is the optimal solution. The final thing we're gonna do today, because we're gonna follow this level trend. So we're gonna, this video will just cover logic gates. Next video will be arithmetic, you get the point. So the final gate we're gonna cover in this video is the XOR gate. And the XOR gate just looks like the OR gate, but except for this one is zero. So how do we do that? Well, notice that it's kind of like a NAND gate and OR gate mismatch. We have the OR gate um, controlling this zero right here and the NAND gate controlling this zero. So what do we do? Well, of course, we just use a NAND gate a OR gate, and then finally, we combine those two with an AND gate. So these guys are um, separate, uh, the independent from each other. So they, they both get a chunk of the input pi by themselves. They, they don't feed into each other. And then NAND gate feeds into the AND gate. The AND gate feeds into, gets the input from the OR gate. And then once again, when we connect to the output, we can also just simulate by toggling this. The behavior is correct. Text solution. This is obviously the simplest possible solution. However, it is possible to solve with lower amount of NAND gates because keep in mind, we already have a bunch of NAND gates within these AND and OR gates, but I will leave that as a challenge to you guys. So yeah, this is the first video on all of this. Um, next video, we're gonna cover kind of, uh, let's see here. So arithmetic, um, adders, increment, subtraction, all of that will be in the next video. Uh, so stay tuned for the next one and I will see you guys later.